Welcome back to Weld.com, everyone. Do y'all remember this video we did a while back at Fabtech? Can you tell me how this beam champ thing works? And it's basically just a beam rotator. We all had a ton of comments to say about it, how beam flipping is just an easy process. And it really is. But when it comes to flipping beams like this, we got to talk about it. We're going to flip some beams. We wanted to show you a real world application where we had these beam champs in action. So we came to the beautiful state of Utah where BZI Steel has a 23 acre facility and from front to back is a full on production shop of I-beams, plate steel, everything you can imagine for the construction and steel industry. We're gonna get back to the weld and fab area where we have these beam champs working. Let's flip some beams. All right, now we're here with Adrian Benitez. He is one of the instructors at Steel Tech Academy. What do you do over there for BZI? Basically a training facility for anyone that works for BZI, it doesn't matter if you're work in the field or you work in a shop, they all come to us for training. There's multiple instructors there. We run OSHA 10 classes, OSHA 30 classes. We do rigging, forklift certifications, MEWP certifications, which are your man baskets. And we're there to basically provide a service for people and keep them safer while doing their job. When it comes to the comments section, I know you all said there's a hundred ways you can flip a beam. Why on earth would you need the beam champ? We've already seen in the shop some cheater bars flip some material. We've even seen a two by four get snapped in half. Yes, sir. Right? Yeah. If it's a smaller part, there are easier and faster ways to maybe do it than have to have that whole setup. There is faster ways they say they can do them like that, but it's also unsafe, right? You can have foot injuries, back injuries, things like that. There's a guy working for a company locally, actually used a cheater bar, came over. When the beam came over, the bar hit him in the arm and did break his arm. Then you have so. also like foot removal. Yeah, you, there's foot, foot removal. Because you it's not, you're it? not flipping little beams anymore. This is a big freaking beam. I would say if we try to flip this by hand with cheater bars, it'd probably take six or seven people to flip it over. You don't know where the beam's going. And there's I mean, one guy blowing his back out that whole yeah, time. Yeah, there's <laughs> back injuries out there. There's all kinds of injuries that we're trying to step away from. But y'all said that why not just flip it with an overhead crane or maybe a forklift. So that's what we're going to show you right now. It's already rigged up to get ready to flip. So you have our hooks over here. So as we start to come around, that I-beam will start to twist and turn. And there's gonna be a certain point if you don't have the proper operator where it could drop, put a, too much of a load on the crane. There's a lot of issues Yeah, you there. can shock load the crane. If it moves the wrong way or it's not dead center, we could fall off the saw horses. There's a lot of multiple factors that can happen here. It's very unsafe. Right. So the first thing we got is the area is safe. It's clear, yeah. got no one around us. So we're, we're gonna, gonna go step ahead back, back up just a little bit. And we're gonna rotate that beam that way. You gotta make sure the hooks are in the right spot. Yeah, that your they're gate's facing not, the right way. Your gate's like, not loaded. If you get in a rush and you're not paying attention to those things, more cause for error. Yep, we really don't have control of this no more. It's just going on itself right here. Gravity has more control of it. Yeah, so that's a flop right there. That's where you're statically loading the crane. It's not gonna probably fall over anymore because the crane's got it. But would you like to weld at this height right here? <laughs> no, that's way taller than me. It's a little tall, right? I think he's gonna rotate it one more time for us. And yeah, this is where it really can get Yeah, this is where it gets a little sketchy right here. You gotta remember, he's almost dead center on those saw horses right now. So there's a chance of him, he could fall off. Woo! Some chain slipping. Yep. You're gonna have some marring on the material. You start messing up the material right here a little bit. If you ask me, seeing what the beam chant's capable of, that was still slower than watching that beam champ rotate. Yeah, it's slower, more dangerous, takes about five minutes at least to get this all hooked up to get it flipped over. Yeah. Beam chap, we've seen it, it only takes about less than a minute to set a beam in there. The other comment was forklift flipping. I think that's a little sketchier. Yeah, we're gonna do that. <laughs> we have no control after we roll that beam on the forklift. Let's so see it happen. We'll try that. All right, dude, now we're gonna flip this sucker with the forklift. This is, this is some sketchy business. You have no control over it, you can get it up, but you just pray it just stays upright. Well, once we get it up and we start flipping it, gravity takes over. You gotta remember, you gotta be on the ends of your saw horses. Cause that thing's gonna bounce. It's probably gonna make it dead center. Hopefully it stays dead center. It doesn't fall off our saw horses, but it gets real sketchy, real dangerous, real quick. Let's see it flip. You're not gonna wanna stand on the end and try to like nope. hold it cause it take your bass like with it. Like you said earlier, the beam's gonna win all the time. So yeah, it's gonna go. There's one. We've got to get it to the other side. Got to flip it one more again. Now yeah. that's going to be, you can't stop that. No. And that it's probably not going to flip a whole lot, like roll, because no, it's such a it's wide beam. bounce and it's going to, ah! Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we have to explain why that's unsafe. Yeah, unsafe. Got to make sure your saw horses are heavy duty to hold it up. A lot of risk factor in there. So traditionally speaking, this is how you'll load a beam here with the beam champ, right? You're still gonna have your combo lift. We had one of the comments saying, well, if I'm gonna already have a forklift, why do I need two pieces of equipment, right? We just saw how unsafe it could be flipping a beam this size with a forklift. This is really easy how we load our beam right here on the beam champ. Less than a minute to come right. in, come out. He's gonna come in, load it in, 
There's no one in the way, there's no injury, anything like that. And you could overhead crane it in too if you wanted, but there's still more swinging involved yeah, with, with the crane. Yeah, with an overhead crane, you have that swing effect that can hit somebody. Not the only that these can fit in your shop, but you can actually take them and they're kind of more or less mobile. You could put them on a truck. Yeah, they're portable. Um, if we had bigger beams, longer portable. beams, <laughs> we could actually move them out, spread them out. You could sink three up together if you had a really heavy column or a beam. Once the combo lift's out of the way, you can start closing yep. up, making sure the chains are all right, right? Because you can still mess up if those chains are tight. You can still lean it. Yeah, you can flip it, lean it. So there's a process of doing it. Chain will come up. It'll kind of pick it up a little bit. You could rotate it. Put it in any position you want. Do you need any certain like certification or anything to operate this type of stuff? No, it's basic training. You come in, you learn how to use a remote, kind of get a feel for it. Really simple, really user friendly. And we're rolling. We're just flipping simple. beams now. Yeah, simple. And as all that. we've been doing is just chatting. Yes, sir. I hadn't had to pull a muscle, break a two by four. Right. I hadn't had to hear loud noises. You none still of got that your stuff. toes intact. Still got my toes intact. What is the worst beam injury that you've seen? Probably people losing their feet. You I mean hitting their feet? Not here at this company, yeah. but still toes will only help you so much with this right here. You're still gonna have an injury if this lands on your foot. You bring up these uh, saw horses right here. They come up. They hold it pretty stable. Yeah, and you can even adjust them to either be sitting flat right here. You can even have one higher or lower. Yeah. It really is whatever the welder feels comfortable. He has the ability to move it where they want it. So me and you would work great together as partners on this machine, right? Right. Because we're both about the same height. Yeah, the only okay. thing is if they partner you up with someone that's 6'4", you're going to be arguing about who's literally going to be... <laughs> Drop my chain! If I'm going to be on my tippy toes or, or he's going to be bent over all yeah, day. Yeah, but nobody wants to be overhead welding. No, you don't want to weld I don't weld position. structural beams much. I've always done it in the pipe. Still, it's the same argument. It's like, oh, welded in position. I would much rather roll it. It's more efficient. Keeps the welder happy, and that's what it really takes. If you're doing this all day, every day, Beam Champ's not gonna hurt. I'm with the CMO of BZI Steel, Mr. Spencer Douglas. We're gonna go over some of the features here on this machine. One of the big questions that they had is, you know, how, how much weight can one of these things hold? This particular setup can hold up to 30,000 pounds. 30,000 pounds, like that's for one beam. That's right. With a set of two, we've got a max capacity of 30,000 pounds. Now, that's not to say that you can't have more than two in a line, right? Exactly. So we can actually pair up a third or even a fourth up to six. Lengthwise, you're really only limited by the space that you have. Right. As far as size of beam, what's like the biggest width? Our opening will satisfy up to 55 inches. Okay, so the chains, how much weight can each chain hold? Each chain actually has a capacity of up to 17,500 pounds individually. So we're over 34,000 pounds in chain capacity with a safety factor times five on okay. the shock load of those chains. Even if something were to drop on it, it's still rated for even more than just a static load. Correct. What's going on, gentlemen? It's a pretty nice weld there. We got some dual shield flux core running. So I got some questions for y'all. We had some comments about welders operating this beam champ. They think it's a bit silly. They think it's a bit excessive. I only have to do half the work and I like that. Would you rather work on your back or weld flat? Ah, weld flat. Weld flat all day, every day. Yeah. I mean, if you have to, you will, right? You're capable of it. If that's what the job needs, yeah. So what do you say to those welders that are like, be the best welder you can and weld overhead? Some days I have to, some days I don't. Most days I don't. I would uh, I would much rather weld flat and, and with the beam champ, it, it makes that way. Even if you just have like a little accessory or a little tab, do you still weld it flat or do you weld it in the, on the side? If there's like one or, or maybe two, then, then I do a quick uphill. It depends if it's over a six inch weld, I'd rather just rotate the beam. It takes 10 seconds to lay it down and, and awesome. weld it. How many feet of weld do you think you lay a day? I'd say 200 to 300 feet. It depends on, on how many parts or, or whatever we have on each beam. How many beams do you think that is? Seven to 10. Seven to 10 beams? So if you're sitting there welding seven to 10 beams all day, every day, you want them to be as easy as possible. Right. That's all it is. Work smarter, not harder. Right. Y'all get back to work. Thanks for coming in today. Thank you. Okay, Spencer, so we've talked a little bit more on the safety. We've seen beams flipped all different types of ways. The welders seem to love it. What do your customers typically think? Well, our customers are essentially seeing a minimum of a 20% productivity increase throughout their shop. They've been able to expand their productivity without building more space. It takes a lot of money to put a shop up. But what they've been able to do with a beam champ is utilize their floor space that they have more efficiently in addition to just the speed of loading unloading 
rotating safely. Yeah. Where could people that are watching find you guys? BZI.com is our main home site for the Beam Champ, Anova.tech. So if you need to learn more about beam safety, beam rotation, not only but Anova Tech, but Steel Academy as well. Yeah, Steel Tech Academy. Steel Tech Academy It's well. right there on our BZI website. Excellent. Well, hey man, thanks for having us out. It really was awesome seeing everything that Steel got going on here. Appreciate it. Hey guys, thanks again for watching this episode of Well.com. Everything that you saw in the video today, you can find down in the links below. Remember, there are a hundred ways to flip a beam, but there's only one champ.